If you're bored of just having a functional looking dashboard in Home Assistant, you want something a bit more fancy to show off your smart home, then you're gonna to have to dive into the depths of hacks and pull out some of the best of the components there that it has to offer. And in this video, I'm gonna go through five of those components that will really bring your dashboards to life. Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek. So in this video I'm going to go through five front-end components, uh, kind of like user interface controls, things like that, um, that will really liven up your dashboards within Home Assistant. Um, you know, if you're one of those users that's more than happy with kind of like little toggle switches and things like that and the kind of like a functional looking dashboard then this is probably not the video for you. Um, but you know, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more uh, slick and fancy then uh, you know maybe you're going to be put, uh, putting a dashboard onto a onto a tablet and putting it on a wall you know you probably want uh, something to look uh, super slick so um, kind of like caveat at the outset of this you're going to need to have hacks which is the home assistant community store installed on your home assistant if you um, don't know what that is or you haven't gone and done that then i do have a video on the channel i'll, I'll link it up above uh, for installation and you know tell, tell you all about that um, but without further ado we're going to dive straight in to the first component so the first item i've got uh, certainly has a wow factor uh, definitely if you've got everything set up on this um, but it is a, a, a Sankey chart by someone called Mindfreeze and um, you know just going into hacks and you look at the details with this one here uh, it's a very visual component um, basically if you don't know what a Sankey chart is uh, it, effectively it shows you the flow and the distribution of um, something so whether that's um, you know your water or your electricity uh, you know it shows that flow and where it's going from one end uh, to the other um, now obviously you do have energy dashboards uh, in home assistant this is just something that's a different way of representing that data um, so you know as you can see on the, uh, the the kind of like the github page for this component very very configurable um, you know I think if you've got solar battery uh, you know um, grid mains grid supply you'll you'll ultimately get the best out of this um, I've gone and set up um, one on one of my test pages that I have in home assistant uh, I don't have solar or, or battery so I've just got boring old grid supply um, but as you can see you know it, it, it shows me my total uh, consumption and then splits it down you know because i've got devices set up in different areas and different floors you know it shows me that you know what usage i've got in the first floor the second floor um, what usage i've got uh, in different rooms and ultimately it goes down to the individual devices themselves so i can actually see which which is really the most power hungry uh, device that i've got i've got um, so obviously you know with stuff like this you know you are going to need uh, devices that have either got in um, you know smart plugs or something like that so you can see this kind of breakdown it's the same principles that you would have to apply if you were going to use the home assistant energy dashboard uh, you know you need some way for home assistant to pick up that data and this obviously um, you know builds upon that so that is the Sankey chart by Mindfreeze okay so the next component I've got is the slider button card this is by someone called uh, well, it could be Matea, uh, Matty H.A., Matty Ha. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what they're called. There's a link down below for, for that person uh, and this component, along with all the other ones as well, if you want to check out the individual ones. Um, but basically, this is ideal if you're going to have some kind of touch panel uh, for your dashboard. So, uh, you know, this takes a you know fairly mundane looking toggle switch for a light switch and lets you have uh, slider controls on this in a very visual way um, and it does it for more than just light switches so you've got things like you know if you've got shades or um, curtains um, you know if you've got fans you know all those kinds of things very very visual uh, lots and lots of configuration 
um, that you've got for this component. Really good to see um, that they've built so much into this and um, really simple to get up and running. You know, I've put one onto my uh, test dashboard and, you know, just for a simple switch, you know, code on the screen at the moment but um, you know when it's actually in use then it, it's it's straightforward it's dead easy to use um, you know can really see this bringing to life a, a dashboard if you've got that on a tablet so that is the um, the slider button card um, by, by Matea Matty I, I don't know uh, <laughs> um, so yeah go check that one out Okay, so next up we have uh, one called State Switch by Thomas Loven, and uh, I've featured a number of components by Thomas on previous videos, similar to this one. Um, so a, a real big contributor to kind of like you know the the whole Home Assistant uh, ecosystem, and um, this one caught my eye because this one's particularly interesting. So you know, as you can see in the uh, kind of like the the page that Thomas has got together on his uh, on his GitHub. Um, this this component will allow you to change what you see on the screen. Um, now I've got an example that I've set up, uh, which I'll show you in a second. But you know the the demonstration he's got here is that you've got um, you know two dashboards set up, one that user A is using, one that user B is using. And you're you're changing the state on uh, on the, the dashboard that user A is using, and it's affecting the state on the dashboard for user B. Um, now, you know I think this is a great idea. Um, certainly, if you um, you know maybe you've you've got guests over or something like that, and you don't want them to have uh, super complicated dashboards. Maybe you want to just set up a guest dashboard. I don't, you know, maybe you're happy with that. Um, maybe something for the kids. It's bedtime. You know, you want to have something a little less um, complex. Uh, whatever. You know, you leave the house or whatever. You know, you you actually you you can do an awful lot with this. Uh, the configuration on this is quite uh, interesting because you know, you can do it by uh, you know user by hashes. Um, yeah, a number of different options and definitely well worth reading through. What I've um, got it set up for is just on my test page. Um, you know, I've got multiple dashboards at the moment that are kind of like showing uh, you know, information that I really I could probably collate into one dashboard. So um, what I've got is just a, an input um, switch just created in Home Assistant uh, and that's just got the temperature and humidity there and then on the other uh, half of the screen is what is displayed based upon what is from uh, selected from that input switch so um, you know I could have you know the temperature humidity or I could have the climate controls uh, come up as well so lots of possibilities for this one it's just you know working out your particular use case so that is the state switch by Thomas Loven. Okay, so on to our fourth component. And um, you know, a little while ago on the channel, I reviewed the uh, SwitchBot Robo uh, vacuum. And at that time, you know, it wasn't fully integrated into Home Assistant. So, you know, I couldn't really set up a, uh, a vacuum card for it. Um, everybody seems to have one of these Robo vacuums nowadays. Um, but trying to find something that you can actually control it with in Home Assistant is always a bit of a challenge. There is kind of like the mushroom um, you know, the built-in mushroom uh, vacuum card, um, which does have the basic functionality, basic UI and stuff like that. Um, you know, some of the other brands have, uh, you know, their, their own integration on Home Assistant. Um, but to find something that's fairly generic, um, you know, is a bit of a challenge. So um, there is this one, um, um, vacuum card by uh, Dennis Doven. hope I pronounced that surname right. Um, and you know this one, uh, even though in the list of supported devices it doesn't have the SwitchBot uh, vacuum in there, it does actually support the uh, the, the the vacuum cleaner. So um, really simple to set up. Uh, you know, again another component, lots of configuration, but it is all about you know, do you want it simple? You just need to do the minimum for it. If you want it all fancy. Um, you know, with all the parameters that your vacuum cleaners support, then you can really go to town on this. 
Um, for me, on my dashboard, I've just kept it really simple. A couple of lines of uh, YAML and it's, and it's on there. Um, I think what's really nice about this is that the developer has put quite a bit of effort into this. Um, you know, there's animations, you can style this, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff there. Um, you know, even if you've got a camera on your vacuum, which mine doesn't have, unfortunately, uh, you know, you can have all of that kind of information displayed as well. So definitely a component worth checking out if you've got a robo vacuum and you want uh, something a bit more than what the uh, standard offering is. Um, but uh, yeah, that is the vacuum card by Dennis Duffin. And finally, well, this one I think is going to interest a number of you. Uh, certainly whenever I've seen them, uh, you know, in forums or on Facebook, always a lot of interest. You know, how did you do that? How did you create that? What component is that? So this is HA Floor Plan by Experience Lovelace. And well, you know, it's one of those ones. It's, it's really going to take uh, your dashboards up, you know, top tier, big wow factor if you've, uh, you know, go the whole hog with this kind of thing. It allows you to create those 3D floor plans uh, as well as 2D, you know, maybe your drawing skills aren't uh, quite what you thought they were, but, um, you know, you've got the ability to do either with this. Um, you know, what I will say is there's a, quite a bit of documentation for this, uh, definitely going to need to read up on that. Um, there's a quick start guide as well if you just want to, to dive in, but obviously you are going to need to have some kind of um, you know visual layout. So you're going to have to map out what your home looks like, and if you want the different floors, obviously you're going to have to do that as well. Um, the website's really good, you know, as I say, it's got all that documentation. You've also got examples on there that you can play around with and just, you know, get the general idea of how it works. Uh, I think what is really interesting, though, is that, you know, in those examples, this isn't just limited to, uh, you know, flicking light switches on or, um, you know, closing blinds or something like that. You know, you, your mind starts to, when you see something like this, you know, wanders off into what else you could achieve with this. So they have an example there with a remote control for a television. So, um, yeah, you know, lots of possibilities with this. It doesn't necessarily have to be a house that you are actually mapping out. Um, so I've not got an example for you on this one, I'm afraid. Um, you know, that's to me, uh, as good as it looks, uh, it does feel like a little bit of a time sink mapping out your house. Um, so maybe when I've got a bit more time, I will have a go at this one. But, uh, it, you know, if any of you who are watching this, you know, if you've actually gone and uh, implemented this into your home assistant, you know, drop it down below in the comments. You know, how did you find it? You know, did you, uh, is it as uh, time consuming as I'm thinking? <laughs> Just let me know down below in the comments. So that is HA Floor Plan by Experience Lovelace. As I say, you know, links for all of these are down below, you know, go and check them out. You know, they all uh, deserve, uh, you know, they've all got plenty of downloads anyway, but they could do with some more, I suppose. Um, but there you go, you know, are you using any of these components on your Home Assistant installation? Let me know in the comments, you know, is there something else that is equally wow factor that maybe I've missed out either in this video or on any previous videos that I've gone and done on these kinds of things? Let me know down below in the comments. If you've enjoyed the video, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really does help with um, YouTube's algorithm and engagement, all that kind of stuff. Um, but as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.